Hi everyone, welcome to Stitchwick Creations. Here's another collaboration video and it's Pokemon. We have legendary Pokemons Magirna, Lunala, Mew, Regigigas, Cosmog and Mega Mew 2Y. My collaborators are Blurred Colours Art, Harley's Dollhouse, Middle Rabbit, Sky the Golden and the Dollmaker X. Let's have a look and see how we made Lunala. Looking at Lunala's design, I made these sketches. Another showgirl to go with my shiny nine tails. Our victim is Spectra. Already prepped, I give her a once over with some acetone and a quick buff with a nail buffer, just to get rid of any residue. I've wrapped her in cling film to protect the body and with cosplay I'm going to make a skeletal structure like the Pokemon has. I'm going to be using some greaseproof paper to do an outline sketch of the bodice and I'm going to do it over the actual body to make sure that it fits and hopefully the cling film will act as a nice barrier so that the body won't get too greasy from the cosplay. sketched on both sides I can line it up on the actual body. Now I've got the base shape, I'm going to peel it off the baking paper and put it on the body so I can include all the lumpy bits and now I can start shaping it to the actual body shape.
because I'm the queen of not thinking ahead, uh, I've got to bake it. So I need to make a foil bakeable mould for it to sit on so it stays in shape whilst it bakes. While it baked I made a big cup of tea and now I can start whittling it down so it's nice and even and has nice crisp lines. for her wing hip capey thing uh, and then make uh, some diamondy things for the bottom of it out of cos clay. With the smaller ones I made little sort of rhomboid cubey things um, which I then later on cut in half after they've been baked. I prefer to uh, sketch things out uh, against the actual dolls themselves, so it's to scale. Um, I work better this way. Some folk like measuring with rulers and other bits and pieces. I'm definitely more a, a visual person. This is a shooting star type thing. Um, unfortunately, the colour of the cos clay makes it look quite different. It uh, looks better later. <laughs> now the chess piece is cool and whittled, I can build up some interest with some ridges and different structures around the booby bits. Now for her headdress hood type thing, um, I'm using warbler and I've cut it to a rough shape and then I'm going to put a piece of fabric over a plastic easter egg decoration and mould it to that. To 
make sure there's plenty of movement around the neck and it doesn't interfere with the other bits of the dress. I've wrapped the Easter egg decoration around somebody's head and then I'm holding the bottom of it around that. I'm getting Ming the Merciless vibes from Flash Gordon. I've popped one of those little diamondy things on the back with some Uhu glue and then we'll prime it with some gesso. We've got the gesso out, we'll prime the body piece too. On to her dress. Now, this is another homespun pattern, so we're going to do the usual make a mummy out of the doll with cling film and masking tape, sketch where I need the top of the dress to at least reach and sketch what I want out on the doll so I can cut it out and make a pattern from it, like this! I've chosen this sheer fabric because it changes colour in the light, it goes like a bluey purpley colour and I thought it matched the colour of the wings quite nicely. And I cut the wings out too, making sure the ends are slightly thicker than I would like them to be ideally, so I can trim them down later. I settled on some acrylic yarn for the hair. I'm going to just use the pull technique to pull it out into strands. And then I'm just going to plug the outer edge of her hairline because it's going to be pulled into a little top knot. I decided on this because I didn't want the hair to interfere with the costume and in Lunana's original design it doesn't have any hair anyway. And now it's time for the old Yahoo! I didn't want to stitch the edges because I didn't want to make it heavy so I tried gluing it and it went nasty, crinkly. It cracked it was horrible so I decided to cut my losses with the back and try a different design because why not but first let's have a strop about it and paint the headdress instead I'm just using a dark blue and then I shall put a coat of some Arteza iridescent blue purple shimmer paint over the top. Using a mixture of this gold powder that I've had for absolute donkey's years and some of that um, gilding paste because gilding it didn't bloody work, I'm just going to paint it. And I'll paint it gold, all of it gold. Strop over, let's do the back end of this skirt. We're going to make it a little more dramatic this time. We're going to make it big and flowing and, I don't know, just a bit more fantastic. I 
I know I've already buffed it, but I'm buffing it again just to make sure there's no fingerprints on it or sticky bits. And then we're going to give her a bit of a dusting with some MSC. I'm going to try and bring out some of the shadows and shape with various blue pastels uh, so it stands out a bit more against the white bodice piece. I'm picking out some details with a little eyelash spoolie. It's a little fleecy tipped brush that they use to do false eyelashes but I find it really good for getting in the tiny nooks and crannies and bringing out some of the finer detail. I'm very sorry but this is as much doll face up footage as I can get. Uh, most of it's out of shot and then the SD card corrupted and it went. So a quick summary. Um, I used pastels to get the main colour up for the base and the shape and then I used watercolour pencils to make the fine lines and the more detailed shapes and after a second spray I used the watercolour pencils and some water to give it a more watercolory, spacey effect. So hopefully without too many spoilers here's some close-ups so you can kind of get the idea of it and I used the usual UV resin for the eyes. And now to shove it all together Look a lot of mess. Let's unwrap this head and see how it works. This is the Arteza iridescent paint that I decided to give it a bit of a shimmer. Not forgetting the moony bits that go on the end of the wingy bits. So um, yeah, I've used the wing shapes to draw the crescent moon shape for those and I've done the same for the skirt. And as this stuff frays like anybody's business, I'm not going to sew it, I'm just going to glue it together and it's going to become one nice solid-ish shape with a little bit of flow in it. It works. It makes sense. I'm just going to sandwich the material in between the two golden half moons and uh, that helps it stick together and just going to give that one piece a coat of um, Mod Podge as well and that'll stop it fraying and keep it all in one piece. And I do the same for the wings. I've also got to trim the wings as well which I kind of forgot about until I was sticking it down and covered it in glue. So I've now got sticky fingers, sticky scissors, but it all turns out right at the end. And because I work in chaos, I've realised that it's only attached at the top top three strands and the bottom two just dangle freely. So I had to wait for that to dry and then trim it down and then rework out where, how it all goes together and then work out how to put it all together by turning the front and the back inside out and having the wings on the inside and sewing it. And I can't describe it, but it makes sense in my head how it did it. It was inside out with the wings inside and then flipped it out the right side out so the wings were outside. So 
So we're hand sewing them together because uh, no chance I'm putting this under the sewing machine. It's just going to eat it. And then you can see what I mean with the turning it on the wrong side, on the inside. Because there was a right side and a wrong side. And trying to work that out because it was sheer. And the same with both sides was quite hard. And this is where we take the clump of lump and flip the right bits the right way, which took me a while to work out because my head was really quite blur at this point. Now we're going to stick the sticky bits on. We've got the little uh, shooting star. I'm going to put some plastic underneath so it doesn't stick to her legs. And then we can start sticking everything else together. I've got some stretch fabric that I'm going to make the cuffs out of. I've drawn something on with some magical disappearing after 24 hours ink and I'm going to have to sew this onto an arm to make sure it fits and then I'm just going to glue the flappy bits down because again I don't want any stitches showing so I'm going to be using some Yoohoo glue to do that. When sticking on the sticky outy bits at the end, uh, making sure they match on the other side because you can see it on the other side if it's not. I've drilled some holes in the shoulders to put some jump rings through and then I'm going to string some chain and some... I've got a string of diamante things that I got from a box of trim uh, string those across so she's got some pretty stuff hanging down her back. There's a lot of things I didn't think through, like how to put it on and how to take it off again so um, I had to put it on on her and then work out how to glue things in place while it was all still on her and as it all fits we're going to start sticking it all together put her arms back through the cuffs and then we can put her hands back on. And now to stick the stars on and making sure I put them on the right way round.
for a hair headpiece uh, cape thing I'm using a little drill I'm just drilling some little holes in the back and then I'll be sticking that to her head with some pins And there we have them all together. Look how amazing they are. I can't wait to see everybody else's videos and how they were all made and put together. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Here's a quick slide. The links to all the other videos are in the description box below. As usual, thank you for watching. I'd love to see what you think of her and keep in touch on Instagram, YouTube, uh, community tag and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye bye.